Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft are among the most advanced pieces of machinery on the planet, and they've only become more complex as time has passed. In order to ensure that all the components of a new or recently repaired aircraft are ready for everyday use, militaries and civilian manufacturers have embraced a wide range of aircraft testing methods. This includes testing individual parts and systems before the aircraft is even assembled. Later, testing moves into a new phase with countless friction and stress tests, as well as all manner of in-flight testing and evaluation. In this footage, you can see a brand new Boeing 747-8 performing a particularly risky test known as the rejected takeoff. This refers to a situation in which the pilot or tower makes the decision to abort an aircraft takeoff due to some concern over performance or safety. In this case, the pilot slams on the plane's brakes while traveling over 200 miles per hour. To further increase the value of the test, this 747-8 has been loaded to the maximum takeoff weight of 975,000 pounds and fitted with brakes that have been completely worn out. Even in the worst conditions, the aircraft can come to a complete stop. However, the result of the maneuver is that the wheels are now incredibly hot. Fortunately, special fuse plugs in the tires cause them to deflate before they explode, and firefighters are able to move in and deal with the overheated brakes. Across the pond, French aviation company Airbus is performing another full-scale test known as a VMU, or Velocity Minimum Unstick Test. This refers to an exercise that helps determine the absolute minimum speed at which an aircraft can take off. To discover this, the testing team pitches the aircraft's nose up as high as possible, ensuring the tail does not touch the ground and increasing the angle of attack. As a result, the amount of lift created by the wind passing over and under the wing increases with speed. The lift and weight will equalize at the optimum speed, allowing the plane to take off. In this case, a special tail bumper is installed to protect the aircraft. Here, you can clearly see that Airbus is testing multiple aircraft types. This means running dozens of takeoff runs for each until a satisfactory conclusion is reached. As one of the largest commercial aircraft providers in the world, Airbus performs extensive testing on all of its various models. This helps confirm the validity of everything from the initial design and engineering to the assembly process. Here, you can see the Airbus team performing a water ingestion test. It's not uncommon for commercial planes to operate in a wide range of conditions, including heavy rain. Unfortunately, turbine engines are susceptible to surge, stall, or flame out when they ingest too much water.
To avoid this, engineers attempt to design the aircraft engines and landing gear to direct water around the fuselage, rather than directly toward the intake. This test sets up a large reservoir on the runway, which the A350 will fly over top at various speeds. In each scenario, most of the water is directed properly, allowing the aircraft to continue uninhibited. Extreme weather possesses several challenges to even the most advanced aviation equipment. However, aircraft like this A350 are still regularly tasked with operating in extreme environments of all kinds. To ensure they're able to perform as intended, companies like Airbus devise tests like this, where an aircraft is sent to an area like Iqaluit, Canada, where temperatures can reach as low as negative 28 degrees Celsius or more. This is the perfect environment in which to test the various components of the plane, such as landing gear, engines, and electrical systems. The A350 is first fitted with temperature sensors, which the crew places at multiple points in and around the fuselage, wings, and cockpit. A350 is then powered down overnight. Come the morning, the team will be able to see if and how different components are affected by exposure to low temperatures. It's not uncommon for many initial aircraft tests to be performed with models. For instance, aerodynamic testing is not something a company should do after a full-sized plane has been produced. That's why companies like Boeing have set up this wind tunnel model shop. In fact, every single airplane and product produced by Boeing starts as a highly accurate testing model. These models are extremely accurate, boasting a wide array of working components and perfectly scaled aerodynamics. These models also contain special sensor tubing designed to collect wind tunnel data. This way, the Boeing engineering team can get the most accurate feedback possible. Here you can see a perfect scale replica of the Boeing 737 MAX being prepped for a trip in the transonic wind tunnel testing lab. This aircraft is the most recent addition to the Boeing 737 family and is specifically designed to provide significant fuel savings to the airlines that purchase it. In order to facilitate this improved performance, Boeing engineers have developed a more advanced winglet design. In this case, a lower and upper winglet moves the effective span of the wing outward, reducing drag and improving fuel consumption rates.
but to prove that the winglet can perform as predicted means using the transonic wind tunnel to create various speed conditions around the model's fuselage. The lab is one of the most precise facilities in the world for this type of work and can detect even the most minute change in the model or the environment. Of course, commercial airlines aren't the only ones concerned with the aerodynamic performance of their planes. Here at Arnold Air Force Base in Tennessee, military personnel uses the Propulsion Wind Tunnel Facility to perform a wide range of testing on new military aircraft. From aerodynamics to live engine installed testing, this facility can do it all. In fact, there are three separate wind tunnels, one for speeds of Mach 0.5 to 1.6, one for Mach 1.5 to 4.75, and another for Mach 0.05 to 2.5. The PWT utilizes four of the world's largest motors to generate these amazing speeds in a testing environment. As with Boeing, these facilities largely use highly accurate models to perfectly mimic how aircraft, rockets, and missiles will behave during flight. Again, powerful sensors are used both inside the model and outside to ensure the most accurate readings. When it comes to climactic testing, models simply aren't good enough. Rather, engineers like those at Lockheed Martin want to see how a real aircraft like this F-35 performs when exposed to different weather scenarios. At the McKinley Climate Testing Laboratory Climactic Chamber, testers can mimic all manner of temperatures while the aircraft being tested is bolted in a neutral position with 150% power and a full afterburner. In F-35B's case, it was important to test the aircraft's vertical takeoff and landing abilities with 100% thrust in different conditions. During the tests, the aircraft is firstly seasoned to the simulated weather for about a day, where artificial environmental conditions are produced with elaborate installations. Meanwhile, temperatures are brought down to as low as negative 65 degrees, or as high as 165 degrees. The simulations extend to producing harsh rains and winds to ensure the operational endurance of the aircraft. Here you can see yet another phase in the aircraft testing journey, the hush house. This facility is an enclosed noise suppressed facility used for testing systems such as propulsion, mechanics, electronics, and more. Both manned and unmanned aircraft can be tested under actual load conditions in these facilities. The team is testing a jet engine that is going to be installed aboard an F-22 Raptor. Whether the engine is brand new or has just been repaired, it will undergo rigorous testing before it is allowed back in the air.
Unlike commercial airlines, the military takes no chances to ensure the safe operation of their aircraft, regardless of the conditions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.